A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth of Mamre on, as Abraham sat in the entrance at his tent while the day was growing hot. Looking up, he saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, please do not go past your servant. Let some water be brought to you that you may bathe your feet, and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food that you may refresh yourselves, and afterward you may go on your way. The men replied, very well, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, quick, three measures of fine flour, knead it and make rolls. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender choice steer and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and set these before them. And he, and he waited on them under the tree while they eat, ate. <clears throat> they asked him, where is your wife, Sarah? He replied, there in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will then have a son. Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent just behind him. Now Abraham and, Ar Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years, and Sarah had stopped having her womanly periods. So Sarah laughed to herself and said, now that I am so withered and my husband is so old, am I to still have sexual pleasure? But the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I really bear a child old as I am? Is anything too marvelous for the Lord to do? At the appointed time, about this time next year, I will return to you, and Sarah will have a son. Because she was afraid, Sarah dissembled, saying, I didn't laugh. But he replied, Yes, you did. The word of the Lord. The Lord has remembered his mercy. The Lord has remembered his mercy. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. The Lord has remembered his mercy. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Lord has remembered his mercy. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. <laughs> he has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. The Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into the outer darkness, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go as you have believed. Let it be done for you. And at that very hour, his servant was healed. Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand. The fever left her. And she rose and waited on him. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits by a word and cured all the sick to fulfill what had been said by the prophet Isaiah. He took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. The statement of faith is profound on a number of levels, and in light of the liturgy we celebrate is profound, in that the one who's proclaiming this is a centurion. He's not a Jew. He is one who has heard about Jesus. And he has come hearing that he might be able to help. He might be able to cure. He might be able to heal. And he makes this profession of faith. What I love about the liturgy that we are going to celebrate here later is these are the final words we say before we receive the Lord is the words of a Roman centurion have made it into our Eucharistic liturgy. How amazing is that? That his profession of faith, we now take up as our own, as we proclaim this truth. Lord, we're, we're not worthy. Lord, we, we can't do this on our own. But when you speak the word, when you say the word, we know it will be done. And what's underlying all of this is the centurion's profound understanding of obedience and authority. Did you catch what he said? He said, I too am a man subject to authority with soldiers under me. I send them, they go, they do what I ask. But he didn't just say, I have people under me. He said, I too am a man, I am subject to authority. And then I have people who are subject to me. And when we think of the heart of the Christian life, this is what it comes down to. Will I, will you be subject to the authority of another? There is no way to pursue God in my own authority. There is no way to receive the blessing of God as I assert my own authority. The only way is to become subject to the authority of God. And it's one of the most amazing things 
to me, when I read in the Gospels, when Jesus says, listen, I, I'm not even telling you my own things. I do what the Father has given me to do. Jesus came as a man under authority. He sent the apostles as men under authority. He called men and women to be those that served under authority. And um, boy, if there is a, uh, uh, a four-letter word today, I think, in our culture, it would be authority. If you can figure out how to make that into four letters. Um, but authority is what is squarely being challenged at every, uh, every corner of our culture. And when you look at the heart of sin, you look at Adam in the garden, it is a rejection of authority. Here is what God has said. Here is what I choose to do in opposition to that. So our culture is in deep need of a restoration of acknowledging authority. That blessing is in fact in submission. Blessing is in doing what has been asked. And in that, the Lord calls you and I today. How are we surrendering to the authority of Jesus Christ? Are we confident in his word as the centurion was. One of the things that was kind of unfortunate, not kind of, one of the things that was seriously unfortunate throughout our time of COVID is you would get people in our churches from time to time switching churches because they didn't like how things were going. What a travesty that our, our commitment to communities and to fellowship is so fragile that the moment something is not quite the way I want it to be in the way things are presented or done or asked or required, we go looking for something else. That is a rejection of authority. The Lord has put us in community to worship and live and journey together, and we don't just do things, or reject things once they become uncomfortable. I need to surrender more fully to the authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus today. I wager there's some areas in your life as well that you need to submit to the authority of God. It takes humility. It takes patience. But when we do, we find the kind of encounter with Jesus that the centurion found. From that moment, his servant was healed. And that's what we need to encounter with the Lord today. So I, I pray that the Holy Spirit will move on your heart as we approach the Eucharist. Where do I, where do you need to surrender more fully to the Lord? And to simply do what he's asked us to do. As we celebrate the votive mass for the Blessed Mother. That was her phrase, right? Let it be done unto me according to your will. Amen.